Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much again for another viewing of Space Force Association. I am Trip with the SFA, and we have a very special guest here today. We have Lieutenant Colonel Dan Kimmick of SSC Data. I'm just gonna let him introduce himself. Go ahead, Colonel Kimmick. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for having me today. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Kimmick with the Space Force, uh, specifically within Space Systems Command, and I'm the material leader for uh, the data portfolio within the operational C2 uh, data division. Thank you, Colonel Kimmick. That's a mouthful. Can you, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about what the data portfolio does? In layman's terms, a lot of our viewers are regular people. We've got industry. Give us an idea on what you guys are working on. What do you guys do? Thanks, Brandon. Uh, so we stood up the organization in July of last year and in alignment with the 2020 DOD data strategy, the DOD highlighted and understood that data is a strategic asset. So in doing so, uh, we aligned SSC strategic initiatives of weaponizing data and understanding that in order to make strategic decisions, the, the ingestion, curation, and availability of data at relevant timelines is what we need to make sure we're presenting to our warfighters and our senior decision makers so that they can effectively understand the battle space and make informed decisions going forward. Hugely important. As I'm sure our viewers have seen, there have been more and more satellites going up, more ground stations. So the proliferation of data right now is just off the charts. We almost have too much data that we know what to do with. So what are some of the successes that you guys have seen in your organization? What are some of the milestones you guys are hitting? Uh, thank you for, for asking that question. Again, from our perspective, uh, there's been some terrific wins recently. Uh, Warp Core was recently ops accepted in uh, October of last year the first category A uh, data asset that was accepted in that regard. It was ops accepted as the data as a service layer. Uh, Congratulations. For headquarters Spock, thank you very much. Uh, a, a terrific milestone and uh, certainly congratulations to our, our industry, uh, our government, as well as our, our Spock team for making that a reality. Uh, in addition to that, we supported Operation Allies Refuge and Operation Allies Welcome. There were uh, needed data sets in terms of understanding positions of our aircraft, aircraft readiness, uh, and the ability to trans transmit personnel out of Afghanistan. And then once they arrived in country uh, to the United States, making sure that the processing for those individuals was done uh, in, a, in a timely and effective manner. Uh, our, our team, our, our Palantir team specifically deployed out to uh, Philadelphia, sat with our deployed members, understood the challenges they were facing in terms of uh, injecting, capturing all of the data fields necessary for the processing of refugees, uh, automated it in about 24 hours and made the work of our service members, uh, our men and women in uniform, uh, much more effective and also fed that data to the Department of Homeland Security, USAID, uh, to help in the expedient processing and finding our, uh, our new refugees at home here in the United States. That is incredible. Uh, for those of you viewing, if you're unaware, so. What he's talking about, OAW, is Operation Allies Welcome. So this is where we got our, so our soldiers and troops out of Afghanistan and then also had to pull out the refugees and people that we are working with, right? So that's a massive, massive data undertaking, fusion data, all kinds of stuff from Army, Air Force, you know, all the COCOMs involved. And, and Colonel Kimmick then has to fuse all that data into something usable, right? How many trucks are there? How many aircraft do we have? How many people can you fit on an aircraft? These are very difficult problems to combine in a short amount of time. So uh, congratulations, that's amazing. Now, you mentioned uh, operational acceptance. I think there's probably a lot of people who don't understand either what that means or how important that is and how difficult it is. Is that, is that something that's hard to do or is that pretty easy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's extremely difficult because the operational acceptance that sticker on your program states that you have a that you've met a specific set of criteria and understand that your system is now the backbone for operations. So it needs to be available, needs to be resilient, uh, it needs to be uh, meeting a certain latency requirement. So all of those factors are defined. Testing is performed and, an, and a decision is made by our senior leaders that, yes, this tool is capable of performing the necessary function in support of our warfighter. So in this case, uh, Warp Core as the data as a service layer uh, was able to expose our key Space Force data uh, for ingestion into uh, the operational tools, the visualization, the analytic tools that are used at the National Space Defense Center. 
Yeah, that's incredible. So, and again, for our viewers, I mean, so many people need these capabilities. I mean, me, the average person, I rely on GPS all the time, right? We we all rely on satellites in space, whether we know it or not, ATMs, everything, right? When you swipe your card at the grocery store. So imagine that times a thousand with all the other assets and requirements that you have to manage. Uh, in, in, incredible job. So, but for our viewers, now let's talk about the good stuff. What is coming in the future? We want to know where you guys are going. This is amazing <laughs> accomplishments. Where are you guys going? What are your summary next steps? Let our viewers in on it. Uh, so we, we've got a lot in the pipeline. So we've been challenged by the vice chief of space operations to more broadly expose data. Uh, what he wants to see is if it's a space force sensor and it's producing data that we allow our allies to see it, that we allow all our operators, our space force operators to see it. Uh, he's challenged us to look at some of the policies that prevent us from sharing that today. So that is a, a major endeavor on our end is knocking down those policies, understanding what data uh, is necessary to protect, but also on the flip side, what can we share with our allies? We wanna be allied by design. We wanna have the necessary infrastructure in place that allows us to share data with our allies bi-directionally. Uh, and in doing so, that builds up the, the infrastructure uh, as well as the ability to cooperate uh, and expand upon uh, the entire battle space and understand the space domain better than we do today. Uh, so that's a, a little uh, small piece of what we're trying to do. Uh, I will also say the, uh, the continued effort and why we built the, the data portfolio is to break down the stovepipes uh, as they are today. So from a, again, from a space perspective, we were never at risk. Our space assets, there was, there was not the, the challenge that we face today from our pacing adversaries, Russia and China, in terms of, of protecting our assets, both the, both the data and the assets themselves. So we built stovepipe systems. We built them in a manner that they're not easily interchangeable, that the data can't flow freely uh, between those sensors. And that is something we are actively tackling today. Uh, and the reason why we brought this data portfolio together on behalf of SSC is to make sure that we're taking the necessary steps uh, to expose it more broadly for our warfighters so they have the data they need to make the, the important protect and defend decisions uh, for our assets that enable, as you discussed earlier, uh, all of the benefits that we enjoy from the space domain today. That's incredible. I don't think anyone would accuse the government of stovepiping data. <laughs> right. So this is amazing. I appreciate it because, right, there is so much multi-layer security involved, data access control involved. And at the end of the day, sometimes we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot, right? When we're trying to jump through hoops to do these multi-domain operations. So this almost sounds like a capability that could be used for like a CJADC2 and JADC2 joint all domain command and control for those of people tracking. And it's, it's, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the vision that we will be able to have communications between branches, between satellites and ground and air. Is that, is that correct? Am I that's, that's absolutely right. In fact, from a data perspective, we want to enable our operators on the ground, whether they're Army, whether they're Navy on a ship, uh, we want to make sure that they have the full picture. And if we find ourselves in a scenario where a Navy officer or Navy uh, uh, endpoint fire control uh, individual is tasking an air asset or vice versa, where there is the, the challenge of having multiple different services if they've got the full picture and they have assets and fires that they can bring to the fight, uh, I, I want us to have that problem. I want us to have the problem of where one service is tasking another and we're breaking down policies and that's a challenge we're facing. That's, that's terrific because if we've enabled all of our service members, regardless of branch, to understand the impact, how they can contribute to the fight, I think that's JADC2. So that's a policy for us to break down. But again, if, if we're finding ourselves in that scenario where that's a problem we're facing and there's no ability for uh, Navy to task Air Force assets or vice versa, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And I hope we do, because that's a challenge we certainly need uh, to address. You heard it here. JADC2 solved. Done. <laughs> Already, is that what I hear? No, maybe not. OK, well, if you're interested in JADC2 or anything related to that, uh, go ahead and reach out to Colonel Kimmick and his office and crew. Uh, actually, for our viewers, so most of our viewers, people, industry, all these types of things, how do they get connected with you? Is there a way for uh, an industry partner or maybe even a startup that says, I have a great idea for uh, connected data, data fusion, uh, these types of things, something that could play into what you've talked about today. How do they connect with you? 
Uh, great, great question. Uh, SSC uh, stood up a front door. Uh, I don't have the uh, the website in front of me today, but hopefully you can help me out uh, by, by showing that here when we wrap up. But there is an SSC front door, uh, and we've replicated that within CrossMission data as well. So if there is a, a data need or a, a data integration, uh, I also have a strategy team uh, that we can connect uh, with. So if you hit the SSC front door, that will be relayed to us and we'll make sure your, your data needs or requests are addressed. Fantastic. Okay, for all our viewers out there, Space Force Association, we will drop that link um, in the description below um, for SSC front door. And that's gonna be fantastic too, because I know a lot of people, have a huge push for SSC, if I'm tracking correctly, is the uh, buy over build mentality, Correct. right? It's kind of that, that race to 2026 resiliency. So very excited about that. Now, speaking of viewers, I know you got plans in place. Can you give us a little nugget, a little secret about what's coming down? I know you got some big, some big things happening. Can you give us some details? At this time, it's going to be a little bit tough. Uh, I will say our, our tagline that we're trying to, to expand upon is, is data as a weapon. Uh, with that being the case, uh, I hope that we'll be able to release some requests for information uh, to industry here shortly. Uh, we certainly want to expand upon uh, the analytics, the visualization, the data layers that we have today and bring on additional capability to support our warfighters. So stay tuned, more to come. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get to that in a follow-up interview. You heard it though, hashtag data as a weapon. I like it, I'm interested. <laughs> and you know what, I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a little some fun for our viewers here. Tell you what, I'm gonna have him write up like a two or three sentence description of what it is they're talking about, data as a weapon. And I want you guys to comment below in the messages, whatever platform you're on, and the person that is closest will be the winner. We will rain down wealth and cash prizes <laughs> upon you in the form of probably a $50 gift certificate. And then, of course, you'll have glory. The glory of uh, holding that over your peers and your friends and getting to throw that in the face that you are the victor of the Space Force Association guessing game, which is, I'm branding that. That's a new thing. So anyway... We just wanted to close with any final closing comments. Uh, nothing else from my end. I really appreciate the opportunity today to, to get in front of uh, the Space Force Association, the viewers, uh, and have the opportunity to talk about data uh, and how important it is to, the, uh, to our U.S. way of life. I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate the meeting today. Thanks for tuning in to Space Force Association with Lieutenant Colonel Dan Kimmick. Thank you, sir. Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it.